What's going on guys? Pretty fun video today. We'll be swapping out my stock clutch for a 550i. Because this one's starting to have some slipping. Oh. What's super awesome is the clutch from the 335is and this is going to be the E60 550i. So it's a 4.8 liter V8. Those clutches are interchangeable and they also work perfectly for this N54. People are normally able to run upwards of 600 to 650 wheel horsepower using a 550i clutch. So this video is not going to be a full in-depth how-to video, but I am going to show you just a few steps and throughout the process, you know, pictures of components out, transmission, whatever. So stay tuned and here comes a quick little review of the parts. Here's all our included parts, clutch disc, pressure plate, clutch fork, throwout bearing, pilot bearing, rear main seal, another alignment tool, and then your main clutch disc alignment tool. Like I mentioned earlier, this isn't going to be a full install video, but here's just a quick little uh, progress report of where I'm at. Exhaust is dropped. We have our heat shielding removed, transmission brace, drive shaft is removed. A couple other things you have to disconnect is the slave cylinder, which is two 13s. You're going to have to remove one of the lower O2 sensors, as well as the shifter assembly has to be disconnected. So here's a little view of it right there. With the transmission out of the car, we now have access to our pressure plate. So we have six six mil Allens to remove to get that off. And then we'll have our clutch disc and flywheel free. This clutch probably wasn't all the way bad yet, but just the fact the amount of oil coming out of the rear main seal just kept making it slip. Pressure wash the trans, looking brand spanking new. There's a lot of grease splattered in the inside, so that stuff didn't really want to come off, but outside looks good. Clutch is off. Let's take a quick look at it. We're getting pretty low. Still had a little bit of life left in it, but like I said, it was mostly due to oil being stuck to it and just not holding the power well. So new clutch, pretty freaking sweet. Pedal feel should be pretty close to stock since it is an OEM clutch, but it'll just be a lot, you know, can hold a lot more torque. Here's our flywheel, which I am going to be removing. And these are uh, aluminum bolts, so I had to buy some replacements. Um, this is what a shot dual mass flywheel looks like. All right, just replaced the rear main seal. This is the original. Do a quick little trick where you take a uh, eight millimeter, you drill a little hole in it. And then as you tighten it, it'll kind of squeeze between the hub and the case and it just pulls the seal right out. So new seal in. All right guys, sorry for skipping so much, but transmission is back in. Flywheel bolts are torqued to 85 foot pounds, which is roughly 120 Newton meters. The pressure plate little six mil torques, sorry, six mil Allens are gonna be 18 foot pounds. You put blue thread locker on both of those. Shifters reassembled. Now all I gotta do, drive shaft back in, all the support braces, and the exhaust. Look at that. Lovely BMW line. Car is all back together and driving. We're just here taking it for its little test drive. It's a very simple process, very similar to the E36 and E46. Just your rear wheel drive, aluminum transmission belt housing comes right off. So not too difficult whatsoever. Now we're gonna go for a quick short little drive. Still haven't quite broken it in yet. We've only driven it probably 200 miles at the most. I'm gonna do a nice easy uh, 500 miles of break-in period and with every stop I'm going to be starting in second gear just to give the clutch more uh, slip time so think of a clutch basically like brake pads along with a new brake rotor you know you have to bed in your brake pads although it is a little bit different with a clutch you don't want to you know stomp on them and get them really hot to start with you want to drive it very easy but still allow some slip to happen right because mileage is only a counter so you can drive 500 miles on the highway, but no wear on the clutch, or you could drive 500 miles in the city and put lots of wear on the clutch because of the stop and go. So mileage really isn't a good depiction. You just want to you know, make sure that you're giving the clutch a sufficient amount of slip. So here I'm going to start in second, just a little more slip and I'm already out. So, but we have no more slippage, which is the best part. So I highly recommend this clutch overall. This clutch is much cheaper. I actually paid about 340 bucks for this clutch off of World Pack, which I use through my work, but it's available off ECS Tuning or FCP Euro, wherever you order your parts from. But I paid two, $320, which many aftermarket, like six buck clutches, 
that handle similar power to this. Uh, they're going to be in the five to six hundred dollar range. The pedal is going to be really stiff, and your bike is going to be really aggressive. I daily drive this car. It's full bolt on. I plan to take it to Sebring a few times, do casual autocross, and I really didn't want some crazy aggressive like high pump clutch. You know, this clutch handles all the power I need. I can bang gears with it, and it's going to you know, outlast me just just fine. So let's talk a little bit about how this clutch actually feels. So comparing it directly to the stock 335 clutch, it is almost identical as far as pedal stiffness. I want to say it's maybe 10% stiffer at the most. Um, and the engagement point is in pretty much the same spot. So mine's about maybe two thirds, or sorry, one third of the way off the bottom. So not quite in the middle, a little bit earlier. Um, and the engagement feel is just a little bit more grippy. So. It obviously feels a lot better than what I had before just because of how uh, you know, the original one was worn out and this is a brand new clutch. But overall, I can definitely tell that this pressure plate is a lot stronger and a lot stiffer. So along with the pressure plate being stiffer, uh, the clutch material did look different on this clutch compared to the stock one. Uh, the new one had, you know, just, it was, it was just the way that the material was attached to the disc. So. I'll show you in a picture. There's, you know, more slices on this one. So it's just, it, it's definitely a different compound of material on there than it was on the stock clutch. So the clutch isn't quite broken in yet. I'm not gonna get onto it hard, but I am just gonna do a quick, you know, little two, three pull. Not, not, you know, getting into high RPM or anything, but I just wanna feel, you know, how she is between shifts. All right, so maybe about a quarter throttle, you know, shifts feel good. Engagement is good. And with that, thank you all for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed and stay tuned for more content in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It really helps out the channel. Thanks, guys.